Welcome back to another Tackle Tuesday, guys. And uh, I'm sitting here in my garage. I don't have a lot of time to film today. I'm in a time crunch, very busy. But um, instead of not making a Tackle Tuesday today, I'm just gonna go ahead and make one on my shark fishing setups because a lot of people ask about the setups and um, I'm not only gonna go over what I use but I'm gonna explain to you in depth why I choose the rod I do, why I choose the real seat, the reels and everything so um, let's move right on to it. I hope, Hopefully the lighting is not too bad. I'm just in my garage here. But, um, so I have my two reels right here on my rods and I'm gonna start with the rods first. So these are seven and a half one of them is seven and a half foot and the other one is eight foot rods. Now these are very heavy fiberglass rods and these are rated for 80 to 130 pound line class blanks, okay? Um, when you're fishing the shark reels like we do with like the Portinos or uh, Tiagras or Duels or Everalls, anything in that 80 wide to 130 size class range or bigger, you don't want to go less than an 80 to 130 pound rod. So 80 to 130 or 130 to unlimited. And this is simply because you need a stout rod because you're putting a lot of pressure on fish and you do not want to be undergunned on the beach, that is for sure. Now, the reason I chose the length I did is because number one, when you're on the beach, one of the things you're fighting is, here, I'm back to you. Back to me. One of the things you're fighting on the beach is the whole, you know, you're, you're fighting the shore break. So you want a long enough rod to where your line is sitting up above the shore break because if it's sitting too low, your line's just gonna get sloshed around and around and around. So you definitely want a longer rod. But a, you see a lot of guys fishing these 10 foot rods and they work, but I don't like it because the way we fish is we fish stand up style. So what I mean by this is, if you've seen any of the shark videos that I've put out, it's we're usually in a harness. And what a harness allows you to do is, uh, number one, it's uh, it allows you to add more leverage on the fish. You gotta think about the angle. If you're sitting in the sand and your rod is pointing straight at the water or at a 45 degree angle, you're not gonna put out as much drag as if you were in a harness and your rod is facing straight up at a 90 degree angle and that fish has to put all that extra effort into bending your rod down before line is gonna come off the reel. So that is one of the reasons that we fish those stand-up style rods. And when the longer the rod, the more leverage the fish has on you. The shorter the rod, the more leverage you have on the fish. So with that being said, any rod between the six foot to eight foot range is kind of that sweet spot for these stand-up style rods, especially on the beach. And um, so now, I got that out of the way. I talked about why they are the length they are. Now let's move on to components. So way back in the day, on both these rods, I actually had foul proof guides. And what you see on here nowadays, I have these SIC guides made by Fuji. Um, the frame is a really heavy, uh, uh, heavy duty material. But the actual insert, this ring that I'm talking about right here, that is SIC, that's a silicone carbide guide. And that is one of the heaviest stone inserts you can get. So what it allows you to do is, if you've ever dropped your rod or anything and you notice that it's been cracked or nicked or frayed, it's because you probably did not have a good insert. So when I had those foul proof guides on there, what actually ended up happening is we caught so many fish and put so much pressure on fish that the line would rub into the foul proof so much that it actually caused an indent in the foul proof guide itself and that was a disaster waiting to happen. Any day I was fighting a shark, the guide could have actually snapped altogether because those foul proofs do not have um, inserts. So if you guys are building a shark rod or want to know what kind of guides I use, I stick with the SIC guides made by Fuji. And uh, these are the heavy duty uh, double foot guides. And the reason I, I say uh, you should definitely fish them, they are pricey. Uh, a guide set for these SICs is around $100 but these should last you a lifetime. These really should, as long as you take decent care of your rods, and I've dropped my rod plenty of times and they've never broken. Um, now, I'm gonna move on to, if you've ever seen this, this is the first roller stripper guide, and then I have a roller tip. Now, I don't, see, I don't wanna recommend something that I don't know too much about. The reason that people do put stripper the roller guides on your rod is to reduce the tension in the line 
and to reduce any friction of your line coming off the reel and uh, running through your guides because that roller has a roller bearing in it and allows the line to come off smoothly. So in theory, uh, people started doing it because they wanted their line to last longer, it makes their line last longer, and it really minimizes that chance when you have the fish of a lifetime on or any big fish for anything to go wrong at your guide level. So, you know, that's one of the things like I told you about. Also with the roller guide, there's no chance of having an insert crack. You know, if you look at this, this is, I'm pretty sure it's just stainless steel right here, this roller, and that's not gonna get nicked or frayed. Um, it's a lot more durable than this guide right here. So there's no chance of that chipping away, because if you had a chip or nick in your guide, there's a big chance of your line fraying, and you do not, you know, when you have the fish of a lifetime on, you just simply can't afford that. So that's one of the reasons uh, people fish the roller guides, it's also to reduce the tension, and um, I don't really know if it's necessary, just because when you do land-based shark fish off the beach, um, at least what we do is, I'm not fishing less than 150 pound test ever. It's always 150 to 200 pound. So if I was fishing 80 pound, 100 pound, and that thinner diameter line, it might get a little bit more frayed and it might get some nicks in it due to the tension in it, but with that 150, 200 pound test, it is not necessary. It's just such a thick diameter line and so durable that I don't really think the roller guide thing is necessary, but I would definitely do your research. I need to do my research, obviously, because I'm talking about it, but I'm not 100% sure. So that's the guides that are on there. And now let's move down to the real seat. These are, um, I believe this one's, a, this one's a Stewart and this one is a Fuji real seat. They are the heavy duty uh, aluminum real seats. You do not want to get a graphite real seat because that there's a very high chance of it breaking or bending. You definitely want a metal real seat. And then I have foam on this one and I actually have rope grip on this one which is nice because rope grip, what did they actually do is they actually put rope, the guy that I had make this rod, they actually weave the rope onto your rod and wrap it around and they epoxy over it. So that stuff, I mean it'll last forever. It's not the smoothest, it's not the nicest feeling on your hands, um, it doesn't hurt, but unlike foam which you'll see, if you look at this rod, you know, foam over time, this has a bunch of nicks and cracks in it, uh, you know, taking it in and out of the sand spike and just putting it down in the sand on the beach. It doesn't stay that nice for that long. But um, that's all personal preference. So if I had to recommend a rod size, if I had to go over and redo all my rods, I honestly would probably go to the six and six and a half foot range just because we do fish in those stand up harnesses. And when you're fishing in a stand up harness, you want as much leverage as possible. And with these eight foot rods, I still kind of feel, you know, that uneasy, you, you still feel a little bit uneasy because it's just that extra foot really makes a difference. You want as short a rod as possible. And you can easily make up for the loss in rod length with a longer sand spike. Because like I said, a lot of the reason those guys fish those 10 foot rods is because they want their line to be sitting above the water as much as, poss as possible, especially in the shore break. But all you can, all you need to do is just make a longer sand spike. So that is the rods. Oh, and I forgot to mention. So the green machine right here, this was the one that I caught the 14 foot hammer on and the majority of my sharks in my life. This is an 80 to 130 black fin blank right there. And this one, I believe, is an 80 to 130 gator glass blank. I'm not 100% sure because I got a really good deal on it at a tackle shop one time and they told me it's a gator glass, but you you really never know. So, um, but definitely big, heavy fiberglass blanks is not finesse fishing. You know, you're in a harness, you're not holding your rod, so you do not need a graphite blank. Uh, now let's move on to the reel. So, I have done a review on these Senator Fortinos actually in the past. So I will include a link in the description box below. But these are Penn Senator Fortinos, and these are not the ones that they made in the past. These are the new ones that came out after Penn discontinued them. So a couple of notes I'm gonna say about them. They're great reels. I can't say anything bad about them. They're not a Tiagra, they're not an Avid. They are what they are, and you get what you pay for. They work. I've never had one break. I've never had a problem with any of them. They hold a lot of line. They're the best bang for your buck when you're looking for a big game reel off the beach. But I will tell you this, 
um, especially after last season that I noticed. The one thing I don't like about the Fortinos, it's one speed. So if you're new to the shark world or even if you do know about the shark world, it is nice to have a higher gear ratio reel on the beach, especially because there are countless times where I'm fighting shark and I cannot catch up to them because these reels are slow as dirt. I mean, they move like, they're, they're just slow, that, simply put. So I definitely like a little bit faster of a reel. So like the Avits or the Tiagros or the Duels or the Everalls, which are the two-speed reels, um, they come in two speeds where you have a high gear and a low gear, and it'd be really nice to have that high gear, especially especially when reeling in your bait or trying to catch up to a fish. Now, I don't recommend fishing braid on the 14 nose, and uh, here's a couple reasons. Number one, um, it's expensive. Uh, the reason that you never see me fishing braid on the beach isn't because I don't think it works. I know it works, but the problem is, is I'll give you an example right here. With this 14 out right here, and that rod, and that setup, with 150 pound, the biggest hammer that I've caught off the beach to this date, it was rubbing on reef. My main line was rubbing on reef the entire fight, and the entire fight I thought I was gonna lose it because I thought my line was just gonna snap. I have never, ever lost a shark due to my main line breaking, and I honestly can, I can say that's because I fish mono. On the other hand, I have plenty of friends, and I know plenty of people who fish braid, and braid does a lot of things that mono can't, but at the end of the day, when you have a shark on the line and when you're fishing around structure, which when you're on the beach, you don't know what's out there. There could be a little bit of patch reef, and if your braid touches that reef, it's game over. It's generally gone. You know, braid is not your friend when it comes to abrasion resistance. Um, but here's what braid is good for, and here's why I don't like the Fortinos. Uh, the other reels such as the Avid 80s and Tiagras and Everalls, they put out two, two to three times the amount of drag as a 14 out. Now, this is a little bit advanced for this video, and I'm going to have to do this in a separate topic, but another reason I fish mono is because you get a lot more drag and a lot more stopping power with mono than you do with braid. And this is because you have to think, for a shark to be able to pull, that heavy ass, thick mono through the current, it's, it's a lot more drag and so much stretch. You gotta remember, Braid has no stretch. So when that shark is pulling line off your reel, he's not just pulling the, the 20 pounds required to get the drag off the 14 ounce. He's pulling all that stretch in that 150. So you could be fishing 50 pounds of drag on an Avid 80 wide, locked down with braid, but I honestly don't think you're getting as much drag as with the 14 with half the amount of drag applied and with all that mono. I want you guys to do an experiment. Take your buddy down the street and I want you to see what's harder to pull. Try to pull line off a reel, do the same distance. Try to pull mono, 100 pound mono and then 100 pound braid, 100 pound braid off a reel at the same distance and you tell me which one's harder, I guarantee you it's going to be the mono. And especially when you're fighting in a stand-up harness and you have that, that rod that has to double over and the shark has to do all that work, that's where mono comes in. You don't get as good a hook sets because mono is heavy, it doesn't cut through the water as much, and you know, you get seaweed on your line, but you know, that's where braid shines because it cuts through the water and it you know it's instant tension so when you go to set the hook it's there whereas mono when you're catching up to the shark and you're going to set the hook you got to think you're taking all of that slack out and all of that extra stretch before you get any tension on that shark so that's what i'm going to say about that mono is great it has its purpose and uh if you go and fish off the beach you know that after 10 to 12 trips your mono does not look new again now imagine your braid, that's a lot worse for your braid. Mono can take a beating, whereas braid cannot so much. So, other than that, so, there's a lot of so's in this video, I know. All right, um, the 14 O's are done, I discussed them. Now if you guys have any questions or comments, please let me know in the comment box below. If you guys have any questions about setups, if you guys have any questions on what you need to buy, or where I got my stuff from, you can feel free to email me. My email is in the description box below. And um, you know, I'm, I apologize that this video was, it wasn't very planned out. It wasn't very, it didn't flow that good, but I just wanted to make a video because I don't want to miss any more Tackle Tuesdays. So thank you guys, stay salty my friends, and I'll see you guys in the next video.